let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. In a true Australian outback story, author Colin Barnes traces the life of his father, Ronald Barnes, from his modest beginnings on a property about three miles west of a little town in New South Wales called Peak Hill to a lovely coastal spot called Kings Point near Ulladulla, New South Wales. He also shares memories from his mother, Margaret Barnes. The book is filled with an assortment of family photos. It's sad, happy, curious, and funny with a little adventure thrown in. You'll learn what it was like growing up in the Australian outback from the 1930s to the 1960s. After a lifetime of hard work, they finally were able to enjoy a comfortable retirement. This family history will leave you reflecting on how a positive attitude, perseverance, and an attitude of gratitude can lead to living the life you always wanted. Colin Barnes was a middle child, three boys, worked on a number of jobs, starting as a plumbing apprentice, also different fields, electrical, building, bricklaying, driving, gardening, which he enjoyed the most, owning his own business, sometime in the Australian public service. Then he started working as a contributor in information technology and later ran his own business in consulting and IT sales. From Sydney, Australia, via Skype, Colin Barnes, author of A True Australian Outback Story, is our guest. Colin, welcome to America and virtually, and welcome to the program today. Great to have you with us. Yeah, no, thanks, Rick. Uh, appreciate your time, mate. I love what you've done with the book. It's a remarkable story of your family. And again, we can relate with you, some of the experiences that you went through and we think about what it was like growing up and the role our, our parents had. For many people, we're fascinated by Australia and the outback. You give us a look at that, a, a look that we probably never would have come across otherwise. What was the reason for writing the book? Why did you decide to write a true Australian outback story? Uh, I was, while well, I was working up, uh, North uh, Australia and um, I came back here and my mum and dad weren't coping too well and um, when I got here I dad had written up all these things I'd written, read a little bit before and um, read some more of them here and then I had a chat to them and I said look this these stories you've written dad I think would um, make a good book I said there's some great stories here and uh, that was basically it and then I just asked mum to put down hers as well and then after quite a few years, I finally got to put together <laughs> something that I thought would be uh, well worth a read. Well, it is, and the book is A True Australian Outback Story by Colin Barnes. I'll give you the information. Book available, of course, at Amazon, at GothamBooksInc.com, Barnes & Noble, the usual places. Have a website for Colin, and I'll give you that several times. Might want to jot that down during the program, and it'll be on our website, uh, thisweekinamerica.us. As you were writing the story, did you think American readers will will enjoy reading the book? Uh, I definitely think um, anybody, um, not just American yes. uh, people, pretty well anybody would be uh, good to read this book because um, it's to me. I think it's a bit different than most books, but um, it's it starts off with a bit of sort of like two kids sort of what they got up to and, you know, things like that in their really early days and, you know, how, how boys and that can be a bit mischievous. But <laughs> it, it develops into, um, you know, more into uh, what actually happened in their lives and, and how they lived their lives and, and how community worked in, um, in the outback in those days to when they went on to uh, uh, Canberra, but they ended up spending most of their working life in Canberra working the American Embassy, which there's a fair bit of information in there about what happened there, and there's some funny things that happened, and yeah, yeah. plus I would think baseball's a big thing in our in our family, and um, my parents were um, the major uh, players in forming a club in Canberra called the Eagles. And, um, yeah, the home ground there for the Eagles home ground camera is now named after my dad, Ron Barnes Ballpark. So there's, um, yeah, there, there's things in there that I think 
uh, American people would be quite interested in reading, but I, I think it's a good read for anybody, really. It's interesting on so many levels. I like the part of the U.S. Embassy. We often wonder what happens in U.S. embassies in, in various countries, Australia being a, a friendly country to the United States. It's interesting to get a little behind-the-scenes look. That's part of the story in a true Australian outback story by Colin Barnes, our guest on the program, what are, your, what are your hopes for the book? What do you hope this book will become? When you wrote, wrote the book, did you have any ideas as to what the impact would be? Uh, not really. I mean, I wrote it initially uh, as a legacy for my parents. Um, and, you know, I, I've created for that reason. Yes. Um, the, the, the Homestead Barn style that's on the front cover doesn't exist anymore. They... When they sold the property and got bought by the bigger players, they ended up bulldozing the whole place. So Barnsdale now lives on forever, um, even though it's um, you know gone physically. But it's it's more about you know legacy for my parents, and I've, I've created a family trust. And anything that that happens with that book, it just goes into a family trust and help the family over overall. But um, yeah. I think the book initially, uh, when you read it, oh, I've read it quite a few times, obviously, but I think it could 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 easily make a good little mini series. Actually, um, that's just my own personal thoughts. But basically, the book, I think anybody be worth reading it and could see exactly the sort of things that was like to to yes be brought up in the outback in those days. I like the idea of a miniseries. You write vividly. So as you're telling the story, we're actually able to visualize that story. As, as I'm reading it, I'm thinking this would make a, uh, this would come off the page very well and would be something you could adapt to uh, uh, a miniseries, even a motion picture. You've got so much of the of what the family went through, the modest beginning, the, yeah. the retirement, the successes along the way. Your parents are still alive, and this you mentioned a legacy for them. So often when authors do that, uh, they don't do it while the parents are alive. By the time they get around to doing it, their parents are, are no longer there. So it's a true legacy in that sense, but they're not there to appreciate and understand what uh, the story that's been told. What's it like for you to be able to write this story, have their input, and have them here being able to to read their story? Uh, I think um, <clears throat> it's only just now um, they're starting to realise what actually is happening. Um, <clears throat> I think it's actually good that, that that's because I've, I've said to them all along, this is what I'm doing. And um, I think in some way it's sort of helped them a little bit um, look forward to even, you know, living longer. Um, yeah, I think yeah, the whole thing has is, is worked out pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really know what to say too much. Um, I just think it could could turn out to be something good. And, and if if they do stick around for a while, the best part would be if they did decide to do anything with it in that regard, at least they've still got them here to ask more questions about <laughs> what, what actually happened in between some of the bits in the book because there's, there's a hell of a lot more um, that could have been put in that book that, um, you know, that I know about and mum and dad know about. But, um, you know, there's only so much you can put in a book. Well, really. yeah, and I like the part that it really almost, I'm sure, gave them something, to, a reason to get up in the morning when they were working on this project and they go through their memories and they have a chance to share those with each other and to share with you and now you to share with the uh, the worldwide audiences in the book, A True Australian Outback Story by Colin Barnes, our guest on the program, book available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all the usual places. I'll give you Colin's website. It's a, a little longer than most, so I'll give this to you when you've got uh, pen and paper ready. I'll do it several times before we uh, we go through the program. I mentioned your background, a, a varied background. I really want to talk a little bit about that because so much of what you, your development is a, is sort of encouragement to all of us. It, you, uh, what the first opportunity you had to, to drop out of school you were gone. You were out of there. That was one of the, <laughs> the first life-changing roles, uh, the m moments in your life, uh, a very successful career. But you got out of there. What was it about school that you were, okay, now it's my option. I'll see you later. Uh, well, I wasn't enjoying it. Um, I had a bit of a bit of a hard time at school, I suppose. Um, yeah, it's, it's sort of hard to say. I, I 
mum and dad said, oh, you know, you've got to stay, you've got to stay. They thought I was the smart one and I thought, oh, yeah, whatever. And um, I said, look, you know, they, they thought I should have went to university and stuff like that. And I just said, look, if I'm going to be rich and a millionaire, it's going to happen no matter what I do. So if I leave school now or stay there, it's not going to change anything. What I'm going to be is I'm going to be. And I just said, I'm out. You know, I don't want to be here anymore. And I want to just get out and do my thing, which is basically what happened. And you've done that successfully. I mentioned the various occupations that you've held, uh, including the gardening that you had your own business, uh, an avid gardener, uh, very adept at that, and, and the computer business that you've been in as well. What are you, what are you doing now? Well, I'm basically looking after my mum and dad, really, um, and doing things around the house. I've built a nice garden, but it's still under construction. You could say I like to grow lots of vegetables and and um, eat fresh food. Um, you know, I'm quite big on having fresh food as much as possible, oh, yes. and if I can help, it's even more so. So basically, I'm not really doing a great deal. I've sort of been studying the world um, and how it's been working and, you know, all that sort of thing. Um, and I've had to sort of create something else in this time to as an income. So it's led me to a whole series of different things I've never done before, which was learning about world economics. Um, and, you know, I fell into cryptocurrencies and things just sort of happened. And, yeah, it's – sort of unusual. I don't quite understand or I don't need to understand too much. I, I just know the universe throws things in front of me at times and then it's up to me to make a decision what's going to happen. And um, so I see myself as the creator of my life. So I just have to make sure I make the right decisions when the, t when the time comes. And yeah, I've just done what I've done. I don't think I'm anything special. I, I just am who I am. And well, you've yeah, sorted it. You've sorted it out. So many of us are not able to do that. You've traveled. You've experienced so much. You've talked about your philosophy for life now is developed through seeing that we all are connected, and you now have a more holistic approach to everything. Talk a little bit yes. about that. And part of that is understanding each other. I mean, <clears throat> we we do so much fighting, even when they're really not enemies, even family members that we want to fight, you know, pick a topic and fight about it. Why yeah. Why is it that we just can't all get along? Uh, I think there's too much um, thinking um, and assuming, and uh, a lot of people don't take the time to see I, I've been taught to question the question and um, then question it again because um, to get the truth it doesn't come straight away and you have to do a lot of work and a lot of research and don't take the first two or three answers as the truth so you have to you know look into things and I think too many people are just too interested in themselves rather than looking outside and um you know, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. it's it's hard to sort of put a put a big thing on it, but I, I just think we just all need to look at each other as a as a human family and and try and get over ourselves a bit, and um, yeah, just just come together and we'll work for a, a particular thing, which is unity. Really, I mean, we we should be one world as a tribe, not a million tribes trying to get our own thing, and you know, just. Yeah, we're all connected, as, as you said earlier. I mean, we're all connected, whether it's an ant or a fly or a lion or a tiger or a human. You know, we're all connected. We all work together. We all live together. We all share the same things. And the whole everything has to exist for everything to work properly, you know. And um, when something dies out, it creates a change. So, as I said, the holistic thing is... We need we need to keep everything working together to to survive properly, in my opinion. And you've traveled extensively. You have studied this extensively. This is not someone who's been isolated that's talking about uh, a utopian world that uh, is not going to happen. You've traveled. You've seen. You've interacted with people all around the world. It's a it's a, a very unique perspective on life, and it's very simple, and it makes so much sense. And uh, it comes from if you're just joining us, Colin Barnes is our guest on the program from Sydney, Australia. The book is a true Australian outback story. You'll find the book where wherever books are sold. 
Uh, are you going to write another book? Is it possible you mentioned maybe a few more stories with you know, mom and dad been telling that or, or any other stories you want to tell because you're a very good storyteller? Uh, yeah, uh, well, maybe. <laughs> you uh, are. Yeah, I, I do have plans um, to write at least one more or probably a couple more actually but because um, I don't think I can put it all into one. <clears throat> but I'd, I'd like to write one um, more about the world and where we're at. <clears throat> and where I believe we need to go, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, as as a as a human race, really, and and how we need to work together. But I see I, things that I yeah, you don't know about me. I, I've, I'm a, I'm a trained healer, and you know I've done other things in other areas that um, I, that's helped me learn a lot of this stuff for what I've um, sort of got taught over a period of 10, 15 years of my life. And um, through that, I'd like to pass a lot of that information on. Um, there's a lot of beautiful, I had a beautiful teacher. Um, he was the most amazing man. But uh, yeah, if I could pass any of that information on uh, and sort of hopefully show people or give them the, what would you call it, um, the basics of how to do create their life the way the way they want it, you know. I just yes. see people as an organic computer, you see. So we we the beauty of being a human is we can change things ourselves because we have a program. And if you don't like the program, just rewrite the program. And I can give people the tools to do that. And I'd like to be able to do something like that in a book. And then they then it's up to them to use the tools. Um, to um, change whatever they have to to make their life what they want it to be. And um, you were sort of presented with tools. I want to talk, and the time is going by quickly, but several really life-changing events in your life. Uh, if somebody's listening, thinking, grew up in the outback, a loving family, family successful, everything is, is going very nicely in Colin's life, there have been ups and downs. Let's go back to, to 1992. That was a, a divorce that was really a setback, uh -huh. something so many people go through, a setback. It, it could be something other than a divorce. That could have been life-changing, life-ending even for you. Uh, How did you get through that period? Because you did and you excelled. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a very difficult time in my life. Um, it's, you know, I lost everything. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I cried a bit. Um, it was pretty hard. I mean, you know, I lost my children. I lost everything, everything. And it got to a point that... Um, I just put it out to the universe. I said, look, what am I doing here? I just asked straight out of the universe, what am, why do I live? And um, I said, if you can't tell me, get me out of here. I just want to leave. I don't want to be here anymore. And then from there on in, things just started falling in front of me. And um, I met these people and started learning how to do meditation. And then I met more people, some more people from there. And then I met this wonderful man that, sort of ended up finishing off what I was learning, which was basically hermetic studies, um, which was um, learning about how everything works, really, how the universe works and how we work and how everything works. And, um, yeah, it was the best thing I ever did. So it was it was hard, but 1992 was a difficult year and it was definitely life-changing, absolutely. Well, and that led into hermetic studies and that really gave you some answers, gave you a different perspective. We go through so much of this and we see conflict and we were ready for battle. And your philosophy is that's really not the way we need to go about this. There are other ways that we can approach this. And uh, I hope you're able to uh, to expand on that in, in another book. Uh, this book, A True Australian Outback Story by Colin Barnes, a few minutes left in the program, coming to us from Sydney, Australia. Video portion of this is up on YouTube, or you'll find it at uh, thisweekamerica.us under videos, and you can check the, the video part of, of that as well. What was it like growing up in the outback? And I, what, you're seven and a half and you move from the farm one way of life into the city another way of life what was that childhood like growing up for you in that, that whole that outback we hear so much about what was that like uh well i thought it was fantastic i mean every time once we moved to the city uh, all my holidays as soon as the holidays came i went straight back to my uncle's farm so i spent all my school years pretty well 
all holidays on the farm anyway. So it was like I went to boarding school with my parents and went back to the farm every every holidays. I just love the bush, mate. And the best part of it is you're on the land you and you didn't have what kids today have, you know, the computers and all these iPads and, you know, the phones and everything else. Yes. You went out there and you lived and you made your own fun and it was – the beauty of the bush, mate. The beauty of being out in the country and, and just being with nature, and it's it's special. Um, it's it's hard to explain. I think um, it, you know it fills my heart because I just love I just love being out in the country and I just love being with nature. And um, it's totally accepting. You know, it's it doesn't ask you to be anything other than who you are, and that's the beauty of the bush and the, the nature itself. You are who you are and it accepts you as you are and that's the way everything should be, in my opinion only, but, you know, that's pretty simple, I suppose, but, you know, that's it. So many of us think Australia. I really would love to visit there, but it takes like a well, month to get there. It's very difficult to get there. <laughs> should we take the time and do that? Is it worth it? Would we, we be impressed with the life and what we, the culture, what we will find in Australia? Uh, yeah, I think it's worth it. I mean, you, you might think it takes a month to get here. Well, it takes a month to get out of here, mate, I can tell you. It's a long way to travel anywhere. But, um, no, Australia is very diverse, I mean, because you go right up the tropics down to the Antarctic, down the bottom, so it's a big country. And if you want to visit here, you want to take a year or two to see it all, and even then you won't see it all. But, um, yeah, the, the it's a beautiful place, the same as the US, the same as... Uh, Europe and Asia, they've all, every place has got its beauty. Um, and, well, for me personally, I like the country areas. When I go to overseas, I go to the country areas because that's where, to me, the real people are. Um, cities are cities, and they're the same all over the world. Yes. But you get out into the, into the country areas, you know, out into the, the bush, as we call it, you meet the real people. Um, for me, that's that's... And that's what I'd do if, if I was travelling Australia. I'd try to get outside of the cities and go up and down the coast. The, the coastline's absolutely beautiful in Australia. And inland's the same. It's They're just different, but um, and the people are wonderful. Um, same as, like, when I was just in Nepal, I was just, the people were wonderful. I loved it. And I, I want to go back. But, um, yeah, I, I'd advise anybody to come to Australia if you could, but, don't expect to see much in a short space of time because it's a huge place. Well, I love that. Leave a lot of time. And if you can't do that, or even if you still want to do that, you'll you'll get a glimpse of that in the book, A True yes. Australian Outback Story by Colin Barnes. The nice thing about the way the book is laid out, each chapter is pretty much a self-contained story. So you can read, you, uh, you get a little bit, then you get a, a different flavor in the next chapter. It's laid out so well. It is written so well. We talked about your parents. How are they doing now? Uh, yeah, doing okay. Well, well, mum's mum's pretty fit and healthy, but um, she's got uh, what do they call it? Um, glaucoma, where she can't fix it, so she only gets to see the oh yes, the yeah. peripherals. Um, so she doesn't have good vision. And my dad, well, my dad, after all the things that he's done in his life, especially when he was early days in the farm and everything else, um, he's got uh, emphysema, basically. Um, and uh, yeah, he struggles to breathe a bit. And uh, yeah, he's he, he's doing okay. But yeah, yeah, he has his good days and his bad days. But uh, yeah, he's, he's he's managing along all right. He he's really keen to see more about this book. That's for sure. Um, I think me doing this thing sort of kicked him on a bit a few more years. So uh, which is a good thing, you know. Well, yeah. But, yeah. It- I can see how that can happen because it's 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 his story. He has a chance to relive that. He has a chance to share that. Uh, uh, and you've taken that and done a remarkable job in presenting the book, A True Australian Outback Story. Colin Barnes, C-O-L, C-O-L-I-N, Colin Barnes is the author. Uh, if you're Googling, you'll find the book, of course, at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, the publisher GothamBooksInc.com. I thank them for arranging our conversation today. And Colin's website is authorwebservices-vip.net-balboapress844497. 
That's a lot there. We've got that on our website. You just click it. You'll go right there. But again, it's authorwebservices.net slash Balboa Press slash 844497. And uh, uh, pictures, good information there as well. Colin, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Uh, hopefully we can do this again. Keep up the good work uh, down there. And I thank you for doing this because as we're doing this, it's actually, talk about Australia being a distance away. It's tomorrow there already. It's like the middle of the night, yes. the day before <laughs> us here. So we're yesterday, yes. you're tomorrow. I love when I talk to people from Australia. <laughs> Thank you for being with us on the program. It's been a pleasure, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate your time, mate. It's um, been a pleasure, too. Thank you very much. The book by Colin Barnes, A True Australian Outback Story. Information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.